What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of NLL Flash. My name is Tino Farah, and we are continuing on with our season previews. Next up, the Georgia Swarm. And who better to bring in for the Georgia episode than Mr. Ty Merrill once again. Ty, for the second time, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm on for the Georgia one. It's not often that I get to preview the team that I'm closest to. So yeah, any opportunity to talk lacrosse with a beauty like yourself, I am more than happy to jump at that opportunity. What a complimentary start to this episode. Wow. All right. Well, let's uh, kick it off right away then. So the Georgia Swarm were a part of a handful of moves throughout this offseason. So as, we, as we've been asking everybody, what was their biggest move of said offseason? There's two ways I want to answer this, but I think let's start with the uh, uh, biggest move that they brought in was the trade that they swung with the Albany Firewolves to bring in Andrew Q, who is a big body dynamic playmaker over on that left side, which is just, it's going to be so much fun watching him work with Shane Jackson over there, as well as like you got Tanner Buck in his second year. Hopefully he'll get some more playing time. Uh, Zach Miller is going to be coming back. It's kind of an interesting left side now at this point. But I think the bigger story for the Swarm is the names that they don't have any longer. Goaltender Mike Coolin retired. Uh, Joe White is without a contract. He is a UFA. Jordan Hall is without a contract. He is a UFA. And Stephen LeBlanc is also a contract. He's a UFA. And then you also look at the fact that Chad Tutton left for Philly and signed a contract with them. They've lost a lot of talent and leadership. And while Poulin has re, uh, stayed with the Swarm organization and is now working as an assistant general manager, it's really hard to replicate that leadership. And I think that's the bigger story than who they brought in at this point. So you're a guy that gets to watch this team close up pretty often, and you just named a handful of guys that they brought in, as well as some guys that they lost. But with that in mind, who are you going to be keeping your eye on this season? Uh, for the most part, I think the – Q Jacko pairing is going to be interesting. Um, I, I do think them bringing in Mike Manley on that back end is good. I don't think it replicates what Chad Tutton did for the club, but that's just a steady veteran uh, presence, a lot of aggressiveness in there too. I'm interested to see how that gels. But honestly, I'm really interested to see how this right side kind of handles things now because they got their uh, first draft pick, second overall, uh, back in the 2021 NLL injury draft, Ryan Lanchberry. He's finally going to make his debut, and that's huge for this team that on the right side now has a pairing of Lyle Thompson, not a pairing, Lyle Thompson, Brendan Bomberry, Miles Thompson's coming back, and then you got Ryan Lanchberry over there doing some damage that allows you to shift Jordan McIntosh back Lanchberry's addition does a lot of things for this club and allows them to address needs that they might have with all of the departures that I mentioned. Seeing how he uh, integrates himself into the right side of that offense is going to be key to this team's successes in the future. And it's just, he's just a damn good player. It's going to be fun watching him work with Lyle. So last season, the postseason just wasn't in the cards for the Georgia Swarm. And generally speaking, anytime Lyle isn't in the playoffs, it's not good for the league. So, Ty, what has to happen for Georgia to get themselves back into the postseason? So, kind of rattled off a couple of different things in the previous answers, and, and I think those all do apply. Still, um, the back end I'm concerned about just because I think assistant coach Sean Ferris has been dealt a rather tough hand two years in a row. Like, the bench is shorthanded anyways. It's just him and head coach uh, Eddie Camo that are running things. Most teams run with a three-person bench, so that's a lot of responsibility that falls on both, but I, I do think that uh, Ferris does a great job instilling systems into the teams. Like, the Swarm had one of the best uh, shot against numbers, like the lowest in the NLL last season, and I think that system works. It's translatable. It's something they've been doing for a while. It's just never really recognized, but the concern that I really have at this point is between the pipes. Craig, so with Mike Poulin retiring, Craig Windy is now the de facto number one. They also have uh, Brett Dobson, who is a first round goalie. This is their second year in a row, drafting the first rounder uh, as a goalie. Um, and then they've got Dustin Hill, who is presumably your third stringer. Windy's a great guy, but he does not have that established record in the NLL. The times when he's gotten the chances, I thought he's been good, but 
his best opportunity game with Rochester back in the uh, pandemic shortened season. And I, I, I think he showed what he could do behind that defense. But I don't, with the way that team was set up at the time, where it was three goalies essentially trying to prove they were all the starter in season, I don't think he really got a fair shake. So it'll be interesting to see how him now with those starting numbers, uh, those starting minutes that he's going to accumulate, it'll be interesting to see how he handles that and what he's actually able to do. The guy's put in the grind, like he's been in the NLL for a long time, waiting for his opportunity to show. I don't think he's going to... Uh, not relish this opportunity. I think he's going to give it everything that he needs to, to prove that, hey, he deserves to be here. It's just how much is it? There's a difference between a 12 goals against guy, 780 save percentage, and a Matt Vince. And that's the thing is like, we need to figure out where you're at. Are you at that Matt Vince level? Or are you at more kind of like the average uh, NLL net minder? If he can answer that question for us, then I think that the Swarm can actually shock some people and make it into the postseason. Ty, again, cannot thank you enough. The insight is always appreciative. Thank you so much. And thank you to the viewers coming back for another episode of NLL Flash. We'll see you next time.